Posted by you slash thrower underscore caught watch caught wife trying to openly cheat on me with someone I considered a friend from her Apple Watch. So last night my wife of 7 years decided to have a chill out night. After dinner she went to the den and was watching her programs while I flitted between watching the Spurs football game and doing some odds and ends that I had planned. Next thing I know she's got the wine out and has had two bottles of the stuff. At around midnight I went to check on her and seen she was out cold on the couch. I went to scoop her up when her Apple Watch thing buzzed and a message popped up on the screen. It said something along the lines of haha I can't do that my name would knock seven shades of shit out of me. I wondered what the fuck that was all about so I pressed on it and it was a conversation between my wife and a friend of mine. Now I wouldn't say this guy's a close friend of mine but he's someone I've played five asides with for years, drank with and have known since we were teenagers. We used to call him jacket holder because when we got into scraps as teens he'd always be the guy holding the jackets while everyone else went for it. Right so as I said I pushed on. The conversation while this thing is still attached to her wrist and scroll up to the top and as far as I can tell it's him that contacts her first, unless she's deleted. There's lots of flirting and wink winking going on but nothing that you could outright say was cheating then I get to last night and when she's drunk she starts openly begging him for sex I couldn't believe my fucking eyes. I'm paraphrasing here because I can't remember the exact words but she was saying shit like how much she had always wanted him. How no one would ever find out if he did want to do something and the last one that fucking killed me, that she was great at keeping secrets. I tried to scroll on her watch but couldn't find any other messages and I don't know her phone passcode. I put her in her bed and just sat in the kitchen in shock until I fell asleep, then got up for work about 5.30. When I went to get in my work van I just slinked down on the wheel and realized I couldn't face it so I went back in the house grabbed a half drunk bottle of vodka filled to the top with coke and went on a walk down the railway line. We live beside a lot of woodland and a disused railway line that goes for miles and I've walked about half the length of it. I'm sitting under a railway bridge like a fucking troll right now just seething at the whole thing. You'd probably think there's a fire going from about a mile away due to the steam coming out of my ears. So what do I do? I don't want to speak to her. I can't even bear to look at her after reading that shit it was like a dagger through my heart. I... Just feel like every morsel of love I had for her has evaporated into thin air after reading her begging like that. Fucking yuck. I honestly want to ghost her man, if I could I would never speak to her again. The whole I'm great at keeping secrets was the thing that really got me though like who even are you? It reeks but it's a case of how far down the rabbit hole do I want to go? I don't care if. I'm being honest I'm just done, I've never felt so betrayed and disgusted in all my life. The thing is I've invested so much in her not just as a partner, but as a person. I loved her so much and thought her personality and by extension my personality reflected that of good people. To realize she's a backstabbing snake makes me feel like a snake, I feel like a worse person than I was yesterday. The only way I can describe it is for someone you looked up to, took advice and life lessons from to suddenly find out they were a pedo or a rapist or just a downright creep, your entire perception of yourself and who you are would be shattered because you've took on board what they've said and invested time into a creep. God I'm rambling nonsense I apologize. I'm lucky in that our house is owned by my parents, who six years ago moved to a retirement village and we moved in. The house will be bequeathed to me when they die but I don't and hopefully won't own it for a long time. They couldn't be bothered with the upkeep and all the problems etc and wanted to see out their final days in peace so when we do divorce my soon-to-be ex won't be getting her hands on it. So what do I do then? I'm honestly thinking of just not saying a word and throwing her right out. Also while walking here it went through my mind to get my mate who's a locksmith to quietly change the locks today, I could feed her any old garbage about something from the doors being broken, she won't care what's going on anyways, as long as I'm about. Then after he's done lock the front door and tell her to come out. And look at something out the back, when she comes out just run back in and lock the door behind me. That sounds childish as fuck doesn't it? ACH seriously though I don't know what I'm gonna do, I'm staring at a bottle right now and my life feels like it has been ripped apart at the seams. As for that prick so called friend of mine, there's no doubt he was up to something here. There's also no doubt I wouldn't have caught wind of this at all so I'll be seeing him very soon, never mind holding jackets he'll be holding his face. I have went to a friend's house to calm down, I threw the vodka away. She has been texting me asking where I am as my work van is still in the driveway. 
I text her saying there is a problem with the engine so I got a lift into work, I'll make my move tonight. Let's see top comments before reading update. Pathetic underscore peacock comments cheating doesn't amount to much in the US courts either. No one cares, no one's going to ask for proof why you wanted a divorce. There is no evidence to show that divorce police. You will still be expected to come to a mutual agreement or split your assets 50 50ths. Cheating or not. Chessbox and underscore Cyclops comments that's rough mate. Can't imagine what you're going through. Hope you pull through. I can tell you're from the UK and despite what Americans here may tell you, cheating doesn't really count for all that much in divorce, in England and Wales, don't know about Scottish slash NI law. My advice to you is to seek some legal advice ASAP, if you can afford it then great, if not try and find your local support through court. They even have a phone service which can help you out with some info. Regarding jacket holder, what a bell end, if you hit him you are letting yourself in for a world of pain. You'd be better off sharing the guy's behavior with everyone else he knows, do your best to warn all the other married men of his behavior and what he's like. This isn't going to make him popular at all, cutting him off. From his friends will hurt him far more than hitting him, and hitting him is only going to fuck your life up. You don't need the stress of him pressing charges right now. Good luck and Godspeed update 1. Thank you to everyone who reached out to me after my first post, was really appreciated. So yesterday after I had written the post and was in a complete mess, two dog walkers came over to check on me as I was obviously concerning them. I told them everything, they listened and the first thing one of them said to me was son, the worst thing you can do right now is drink, it'll cause carnage. I have to thank her for that because I was on the highway to hell at that point. I threw the vodka away got in touch with a friend and he said I could come to his house for a while to calm down, he was at work but told me where the spare key was. We live in a small town of around 15,000 people and he wasn't too far away so once I got there I sat on his couch just trying to calm down. Throughout the morning I was getting multiple texts and phone calls from my wife asking where I was and what the hell was up as my work van was still sitting in the driveway and I was nowhere to be seen. I text her back telling her that there was a problem with the engine so I got a lift into work which she seemed to buy as she just text back saying okay. When my friend got back from his work at about 5 o'clock I told him everything that had happened and asked him his opinion. I also told him not to tell anyone about jacket holder as that might then get back to my wife whom I didn't want at this point, I would deal with him later. By that I mean I'll expose what a little rat he is, knocking fuck out of him doesn't help me at all as of now. As an aside to the people saying he done nothing wrong, he messaged my wife first, he was being extremely flirty, what the fuck is he even playing at messaging my wife for in the first place he only knows her in passing, from afar. Look I've got no problem with two adults conversing with each other but they hardly knew each other and it was flirty from the start, as far as I could tell. I think they've seen each other while out and about and it's gotten flirty then. So my friend convinced me to try and keep a low profile and see what I could dig up but at the same time speak to a lawyer and get the ball rolling in terms of finding out my options, which I have done today. He took me home about 6 o'clocks and I was honestly dead on my feet by that point. I think the adrenaline pumping the entire day then suddenly stopping knocks it right out of you so I was extremely tired when I got home. The second I walked through the door I knew something was up as my wife was on me right away asking me all sorts of questions about work. I asked her why does she even care and she said that I'd left my big flask and my lunch bag in the front passenger side seat and something's been up today she could feel it. I was about to lie but I was just too tired, I couldn't be bothered putting any sort of charade up so I just said yeah there is something up, that when I was putting her drunken arse to bed last night a message came up on her watch, which I read, and all the other ones, and that she was a fucking disgusting cheat that I wanted nothing more to do with. Her demeanor went from an arms crossed person in power to scared little girl within about a second. Good at keeping secrets? Begging that little rat for sex? Yep, read it all. She started sobbing and I just walked away and upstairs into the shower. When I got out she was sitting on the top stair crying still. And the excuses started right away. How she was drunk, vulnerable, had never done anything like that before, how he had messaged her first and it didn't mean anything she was never gonna go through with it. Pretty much everything that everyone on here was saying she would say, like she had the playbook out. The only thing she didn't do was trying and blames me, she probably knew I would've thrown her right out the door if she had tried that shit. 
I told her that I wanted a divorce and her out of the house within a month. Also told her that she was moving to the spare room. I've been pretty much ignoring her ever since just scowling at her and shaking my head when she starts waffling nonsense. I don't want to hear it. She slept in the spare room last night and I haven't spoken to or texted with her at all today. If I'm lucky maybe she'll be gone when I get back from work but my luck's not that good I suppose. On getting her out though I was telling my parents what was happening today and my mother was adamant I wasn't throwing her out onto the streets. Her and my mother are close and always have been, we'd have been together 11 years in December. My mother was saying she made a mistake and that we should sort it out like adults, that we've been through too much together and that she didn't actually do anything it was just words. She completely took her side over mine, couldn't believe it. Could this fuck me here? Like do I have no right to ask her to leave if my mother is against it? It does literally gonna be my house when my parents pass and I did nothing wrong so I'm not leaving. It's probably gonna turn into War of the Roses part 2. I managed to get myself an appointment with a divorce lawyer for next week so I'll be going to that to discuss my options. Until then I'm just gonna ignore my soon-to-be ex-wife I guess. I know she's probably not gonna admit anything else now. I'll never know if she was a really good liar or she was just talking shit to him to get him on side with her for an affair. Anyways sorry about the delay in the update, just got the chance to write it now as I'm finishing work. Well back to the funhouse I guess. Let's see top comments before reading next update. Polar underscore 31 suggests I've never been in this situation before in my life but I have some advice. Try and find a hobby to distract yourself, sports, games like cards, cycling running. Maybe go to your buddies for a bit play video games with whoever you play with. I'm sorry for all this happening to you I wish I could offer more help I wish you the best of luck with this whole situation Morathan Dork replies this is great advice. Anything you can do to take care of yourself and give yourself some love during this painful time will help you heal. Sounds like you have at least one great friend you can lean on but I'd eventually look into getting professional help too. I would add, ignore the users telling you to burn bridges with your mom. She just loves you and your wife both and doesn't like seeing either one of you hurt, and you're both hurting now, although for extremely dichotomous reasons. She, of course, has seen every part of your life, and all the mistakes you've made along the way to become who you are. She has experience forgiving and loving your mistakes so it's easier for her to forgive this mistake by your wife. That doesn't mean you have to forgive her too and your mom will come around to your perspective eventually. Final update, caught wife trying to cheat with my friend from her Apple Watch Monday November 16th high, I thought I'd give an update since a lot of people have been personal messaging me asking for one. It's now been 20 days since I found out my wife was trying to cheat on me with my friend and the situation has become hellish. I gave her a month to get out and she's been sleeping in the spare room but it's clear now she doesn't have any intention of going after she got in the ear of my mother. She doesn't have anywhere to go at any rate but that's not my problem. I've seen my divorce lawyer multiple times, and am now in the process of drawing up a divorce petition and having my wife serve divorce papers. I've also opened my own bank account and taken 50% of the balance from our shared account. The atmosphere around the house has been weird to say the least. The living room has turned into a no man's land where no one frequents as we both spend the majority of our times in our rooms, I've also intentionally been working late a lot so I don't have to interact with her much. I had been completely ignoring her but after reading about the 180, have started implementing that and been civil if a little cold towards her. I'm so glad I did this as I was beginning to feel like a monster. Refusing to acknowledge her existence, it was not the right way to behave and I ended up feeling like the one who had wronged her, rather than the other way about. The only time I broke from the 180 was when I walked into the bathroom last week and she was sitting on the floor by the bath crying. I helped her up and instinctively gave her a hug though it was more of a there there type hug than one with much love attached to it. The sad thing is that I'm so suspicious of her now that I wouldn't put it past her to be waiting on me coming in so she could put on a performance. The thing is that probably isn't even true, but this is the sort of shit that's going through my head in this environment, it's just toxic. She's been crowing about how she'll do anything and everything to save this marriage, anything to prove to me that it was just a silly mistake, so I brought up a lie detector test. I don't plan on ever getting one done, wouldn't even know where to start, I just wanted to gauge her reaction. She was all for it, well until a few hours later when she came to me, tablet in hand, going on about how inaccurate they are, 
and that anxiety and nervousness can throw up false readings, and with her and her anxiety disorder and all, I just laughed, wasn't even a normal like chuckle either. It started as a bit of a cackle and ended in a childish giggle. It appears she would do everything to save this marriage, well everything except take a lie detector test that is, hmm, it doesn't even matter anyway, I meant what I said in my op, every morsel of love I had for her, dissipated into the atmosphere after I read her say those horrible things. I don't see her as my true love anymore, the person I could tell anything to and would trust with my life. I just see trash, trash that needs taken out before it stinks the place up. Jacket Holder has been the talk of the town since I exposed him to our friend group a few weeks back. It's safe to say he has no friends left among us, and has been completely ostracized. I tried phoning him a few times but he refused to answer then blocked my number. Fuck that little rat I hope it was worth it. I've spoken to my mother multiple times about this and during a heated argument asked her why she was taking my wife's side, like was there something she wasn't telling me here? What was she expecting? Us to live like roommates? Go on like nothing happened? It's ridiculous. She said she has always seen my wife as the daughter she never had but always wanted. My mother had a stillborn daughter before I was born and it has haunted her, so she latched on to my wife and has done since we got together. As I said previously, they have a close bond. The fact my wife doesn't have any family and only a few friends who have their own busy lives and families means if I threw her out she would be all alone and my mom thinks that's unacceptable especially during a pandemic. She tried to get me to come to a compromise saying that in three or four months we can look at it again and see where we are mentally and is pushing me to try couples counseling before I throw in the towel. I'm not doing that, the thought of being in the same house as my wife over Christmas makes me feel ill. She'll want to do it right as she does every year and it'll be a complete shit show. My dad, God love him, has never been much of a talker, never up nor down just always there. He's a quiet, proud but timid man and my mother's word has always been the one that matters in our house. People on here have been telling me that I'm selfish and spoiled. Cause it's not my house and I have no right to make demands but it's now a case of my wife or me for my parents. If worse comes to worst then I'm ready to walk out the door and never come back. Fuck this house, I have to be able to look at myself in the mirror with some semblance of self-respect and someone has to keep their word in this debacle. If I do leave, my friend has said I can stay with him, for a few weeks or so till I get myself sorted. If I do walk out that door though, I'm done with my parents, I'll never speak to them again in my life. They'll probably see it as me giving up on them, me walking away without trying to at least have a go at fixing things first. I see it as them choosing someone who broke my heart over me. Like what will be the logistics of this once I'm gone? Just. Her staying there herself, my mother and father looking after a backstabber while their flesh and blood goes off alone? A little more info on the house, my parents let us move in a year after our wedding, it was an apparent belated wedding gift, although that was just the chatter from them at the time, they were always planning on moving out and moving us in. I've spent tens of thousands on it. Over the years but that's neither. Here nor there. I have fantasies of leaving this all behind, going somewhere new and starting again, but I don't have anywhere else to go. I've lived in this town my entire life, it's all I know. Am I being too harsh here? I'm literally ready to slingshot my parents right out of my life but I feel so torn. Why am I the one who has to lose everything and everyone? I've tried to be good, and I always thought you make your own luck, and that good things happen to good people. Maybe I'm not as good as I think I am. Maybe I deserve all I fucking get. Wednesday December 2nd well since this morning I no longer call that house home. I seen on the calendar that my wife had a hospital appointment with her ophthalmologist, so knowing she would be gone for few hours I took that as an opportunity. To get my stuff together and move out, which I have. After getting my things moved and sorted, I just put the house keys on the kitchen table, along with the divorce papers I received from the divorce lawyer last week and was on my way. I've blocked both my wife and mother's numbers and any communication I have with my wife going forward will be done through my lawyer. In terms of my living situation I'm staying with a friend for a week or two but hopefully I should be in my own rented place before Christmas. I haven't spoken to my parents in a few weeks, last time we spoke, was via text and I tried to tell my mother, in explicit detail, the things my wife was saying during her texts to Jacket Holder. Why it hurt me so much and why I didn't think it was her first time doing it with 
the whole I'm good at keeping secrets comment and thus could never trust her again. My mother text back saying she couldn't speak to me when I was like this, and she would let me cool off. She tried to phone me a few days ago and I just blanked her call and as said a bit further up, since today have blocked her number. I feel so let down by my parents and at this point, it almost feels worse than the original betrayal from my wife. The way I'm feeling right now I don't think I'll ever speak to them again. I think in times of strife, you look to your family to be strong for you, to be a rock and give you the wronged one, their support. My parents have been weak, they've made me feel like the one in the wrong, like I'm overreacting, and it's me that's ripping this family apart. Well, it's not. I didn't ask them to move mountains for me, just move my cheating wife out the house and they made their choice. My father also had the chance to put his foot down for once in his life and stand up for me, but didn't. You make your choices and you live with them I guess. Reading some of the comments on here from my previous posts, people have been saying things like, I threw in the towel so easily, I was looking for a way out and didn't love my wife because I didn't try hard enough to save things but that's not true. I loved my wife more than anyone on this earth and I was broken when I discovered what she was doing. I think we all have boundaries, and once those boundaries have been crossed things change irrevocably. When I read those horrible texts, something changed. Inside of me, I fell out of love with her, like being snapped out of a spell in the movies. Anything tried after that is just delaying the inevitable. I have to say that I'm interested in the whole dynamic of their relationship now that I'm gone. Like are my parents gonna continue supporting her knowing that it has finished their relationship with their son? As for me, I'd love to travel. My wife. Hated flying so most of our holidays, had been to southern England, the likes of Newquay and Torquay in Cornwall and Devon so would be great to travel abroad again. The last time I was abroad was when I was 20 for a mate's holiday in Greece so 13 years ago. I'd love to see a bit of America so once this pandemic calms down I've definitely got my sights on the states. Well that's about it for me I guess, this'll be my last post as I don't want to outstay my welcome and I don't think there's much more to say at any rate. If you want to see how I'm doing down the line shoot me a DM and I'll try and keep you in the loop. Thanks for reading, bye let's see top comments cupcakes or ah comments I've been keeping up with this. Good luck with traveling abroad. OP replies thank you, excited and nervous in equal measure. Hopefully things get back to normal soon with there being a vaccine and all, so hoping to be on my way sometime in the new year. Mary Ajudali comments I have this nagging suspicion that your mom have cheated on your father, and since she is close to your STBXW maybe she told her about it and some other juicy secrets. Maybe that's why your STBXW said she is good at keeping secrets. It can even be a possibility that your mother knew about her cheating on you or even encourage it as long as it remain a secret. Thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the notification bell as well.